There's a black eyed barber showing. Yes, we've got Maurizio Sullivan, the president of the WBC. So I'm quite sure he's there. Uh, he's got quite a story to tell us, and uh, it probably shed a light uh, on one or two things that we need to ask questions about. So Maurizio, I've been watching a while ago. You set up your WBC walks. How did that all start? Trying to get fit again and moving again. With the with the workout, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, we we created the WBC workout to get uh, people uh, to move at home, stay at home, and, and exercise, and to get champions and fans interacting. So it's been very, very nice, very fun. But you yourself, you started about you started sometime last year again, didn't you? Getting more active. I saw you doing whenever wherever you were, you were up in the morning with your cap on. Um, yeah, I, I started a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. You look like you've lost a little bit of weight. Uh, I yes. was going to say the same. <laughs> now you're fighting weight. Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> has Johnny, has Johnny, you've just got to number one ranking cruiserweight now, saying it looks like he's lost weight. <laughs> you're <okay. laughs> I bet it's a nightmare, this current situation for you, isn't it, uh, business-wise? Well, it's it's for everyone. I mean, every single aspect of life and the economics is tragic. What we are trying to do is just stay busy, look at this at short period of time, instead of going, you know, if you think ahead, you get very much uh, frustrated and even panic goes into you, so... We'll go every every fifteen days. We evaluate what is happening. Yeah, you've got a cool you've got a coolness about you. Remind me of your dad, actually. Uh, very cool <laughs> when it comes to the pressures of life. How much fun have you had with the uh, the British fans over the Dillian White uh, saga? It's been it's been <laughs> tough. You know, some British fans are very aggressive, but that's the passion of the sport. So I respect that, and it's great to see. The passion, great to see a, a supporter try to fight for his uh, hero. I'm a sports fan. Yeah. And when I see something that I don't like. Uh, I mean, I don't go out and, and do those things, but I, I appreciate people getting anxious and getting upset. But uh, as long as we do the right thing, and, and it's not easy, you know, you, you cannot just please every single situation because there are many different uh, aspects of it. It, it got, I mean, some of the British fans at some time, Mauricio, you know, look, as we all know, not just in boxing, whether it's soccer, boxing, table tennis, anything. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of just, once they get, it's like a dog with a bone, once they start, they don't stop. Did it ever get to this position where you were just getting a bit too fed up of it? It was just too much. Because some of the stuff, it just, it, it just like kind of built and built and built into it. You know, we are not in a popularity contest. Yeah. So... You have to understand that there are decisions that do not please every single party. You know, I, I make, for example, I make a tweet of my of my daughter or something very positive, nice, personal, and there you get give Dylan White the, the <laughs> shot. <laughs> every single comment, but it's okay. Uh, that's my. That's one of my. <laughs> Yeah. What what is the major issue there? Because because we hear it's six hundred days, nine hundred days, a thousand days. What is the major issue there? Is, is it is it just the politics of our sport? No, no. There, Billion White was never the mandatory contender until he defeated Oscar Rivas. Mm. Yeah. All yeah. that build up from before about the five hundred days and all those things. Uh, has no merit. We address that with Dillian, with Eddie Hearn, with his representatives in the in the right way. We met several times. We offered several alternatives to attend his uh, his 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 wanting to to fight for the WBC. We offered interim titles a couple of times just to get the things going. But uh, I. I for me, all that is in the past. Now he's a mandatory contender. He's the interim champion, and he's ready uh, for February 21st. But all, all the, the I'm sorry. 
He fights the winner of, of Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, which happens later in the year. The winner of that fight will fight Dillian next. Yeah, the champion of the WBC has to fight Dillian because he's a mandatory contender. Dillian was going to defend against Povetkin, but I don't know if that will be postponed or moved up yeah. uh, later in the year. We were saying, Mauricio, we were asking, you know, with the potential delay to White, uh, sorry, sorry, forget White for a second, relax, with the Deontay against Fury. You think that, you think that puts the ball, not the ball back in maybe Deontay's core, but do you think it gives him a better chance in the rematch, the delay, or do you think it maybe makes no, what do you think to the, will it, if anybody's going to benefit, you'd think it's Deontay from the delay, wouldn't you? I don't know if July 18 was a real date. Right. I thought it was quite soon for Wilder to go back immediately into camp after being knocked out the way he was knocked out, go back to camp and recover mentally and physically from such a... I mean, to be undefeated, five years world champion, and then boom, it's a very difficult uh, task to recover mentally plus the physically. But I think this delay is going to help... Uh, Wilder, in my opinion. So you, you, you're fortunate enough to be one of the, the very few that, that know the inside track, what happens behind the scene. How is Wilder now physically, mentally, emotionally, motivationally? How is he? He's very well. He's, he's a warrior. He's a monster. He's got tremendous motivation. You have to understand what a fighter goes through in life before going into the glory days. Every fighter is, is a, a, a story for a movie. What Wilder went through with his daughter, uh, there's so many uh, days that he didn't know if he was gonna be able to provide medicine and food for her, to have lost his mother and see his father crying. I mean, all these things are very powerful and th that creates a very strong character for every boxer. Wilder in particular is very proud and uh, he lost and he knows he lost and he only has uh, everything to win, nothing more to lose. He loses yeah. again, it's okay because he already lost. Yeah. All that he has is to go and make it and win, otherwise his career is over. Mauricio, Johnny, uh, Johnny mentioned your father just before. And uh, we know you've been around boxing a long time. Would you, uh, do you mind sharing some of the great fights you went to with your father? Could you let us know a few of them? Sure, sure. You know, the first fight I, I remember uh, with, uh, with names, because I went to many fights that I didn't know who was fighting. Yes. The one was Mantequilla Napoles. He fighting uh, Muñiz. And right. Napoles was my hero. I was five years old. Yes. And the fight was very bloody, okay? Yes. At the end of the fight, my father takes me to the dressing room and he says, would you like to see your hero? I said, of course. So <laughs> I wanted to be a fighter. I wanted to be M Mantequilla Napoles. So I go in and there's Mantequilla Napoles lying on bed. Jeez. Both eyes closed, both uh -huh. eyebrows completely open. <clears throat> and I just look at him. And I turned to my father and said, no, I, I'd rather be a fireman that. No more boxing for me. <laughs> but uh, I was so fortunate. My father, a very family-oriented man, he took on me. I was his favorite of the siblings. And he was, I, I don't know if he took on me or took on him, but I was always, he always took me to the press conference, to the, to the events, to the fights. I saw many Chavez fights. I saw Mike Tyson when he won the title. Yes. Uh, I was going to high school in, in Boston and it was uh, a holiday. So he called me and said, come to Las Vegas. That was my first time in Las Vegas. I was 16 years old. Wow. Yeah. It was Mike Tyson knocking him out, uh, Trevor Berwick. Wow. But, you know, I, I have been very fortunate to be in many fights right there with my dad. What he did was, you want to do? What did you want to do? I always wanted to do whatever my father told me. Okay. I went to school 
uh, I went on business administration because that's what he studied. None of my brothers did. Yeah. After the, my day of my graduation, next day I was working in our family factory. We have a business. Uh, boxing is not the business of the Suleiman family. We have other businesses. So the first day I just went to the factory and started working there to give my father all the time he needed to be in, in boxing. So I was always close to him, trying to take work away from him. And I always wanted to be with him. To I, I did not want to be the WBC president, never. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was a circumstance. When my father passed away, I said, this is the end for boxing for me because he just passed away. I was in boxing for him. But then uh, my mother said, no, you got to stay in the WBC. Look, it's his life. So I, I decided to stay as se secretary as I was. And then the WBC had the meeting for elections and they just nominated me and appointed me as a president. Since your father passed away, have you seen, uh, uh, have you, has, has the sport changed? Since oh, dramatically. <clears throat> dramatically. The sport has changed. Uh, there's many boxing promoters. Uh, many smaller venues and, and promotions. The platform is huge with the zone, with PBC uh, on Fox Open Television, with Top Rank, with the ESPN app. I mean, the platform has just exploded worldwide. And it has changed. There's not that, uh, not that moral uh, leader in the sport. I always thought my father was the moral uh, one who kept everyone together. I, I miss those days where there was more respect in all the aspects of the sport. You mentioned respect, and I must, uh, it must be very hard. It must be very hard for your father, and very hard for you because you're dealing with all rival promoters from all over the world. Some love each other, some hate each other. But you need, to, you have to be everybody's friend. Uh, it, it must be very hard for you to do that, not be, not to be caught in the middle. It is hard, and uh, sometimes you are asked to do things that simply cannot be done. And that's when you have to become the bad guy. As I say, every time you, you make a ruling, you benefit one or two sides, and then three or four are not happy with that. But as long as you stay with the principles, with the rules and regulations, and always be consistent, then you are okay. Uh, as I said, it's not a popularity contest. If I was that, I would be suffering so much. You take the hit, and then you see promoters or fighters have to go to another organization. And then the loyalty from that who was your, your creation, to say it in a way, then he goes somewhere else. It's a very difficult, uh, if you take it by heart, as we do, it's a lonely place. Yeah. Rizio, do you have, do you know now I'm sure you're proud of all the WBC champions. Is there... A WBC champion right now whose fights you look forward to the most? Who's, who's your current favourite champion from the WBC to watch as a fighter? Not as a person, but to watch as a fighter. Who excites you? You know, truly, uh, you feel so proud of every single fighter. And I, I, this is genuine. It's not uh, yeah. invented. I look forward for the success of the champion. And also, I look forward for the challengers yes. who are eager to get to that point. Uh, I used to, I learned from my father. Uh, it took me a while to understand how you can go into the ring after a fight and be very uh, happy for the winner and then be very sad and empathetic exactly. to the loser. Mm. Yeah, you could think it's like uh, hypo hypocrisy, but no, you you know when you see the fighters' dreams, when you really see firsthand at the weigh-in, you see a fighter from Thailand, his dream is to become a champion and to yes. change his life and change his family and become a hero, and then 
he loses, it's a tremendous blow. Or he wins, it's a tremendous... Mm. You know, when, when Ron Visay knocked out Chocolatito Gonzalez, yes. that was... I mean, that's a huge turn from the yeah. hero of Nicaragua to become a loser and then the hero of Thailand. Yes. It's a very complicated sport as far as uh, um, feelings for, for the athletes. You speak of complications, um, and as we as boxers, we'll understand. We have WBC, WBA, IBF, WBO. In an ideal world, how many titles would you would you like to see? Uh, do you welcome these different governing bodies? I can only speak for the WBC. That's that's uh, an issue. I have good relationships with. Uh, the other organizations, uh, the ideal world will never exist. I mean, a fight fan would like to have one world champion, that's it. But then tomorrow a new organization will be created. Mm. Yeah. If you, that's the, that's the duty of the fan or the media. Analyze what each organization means, what does it do, how do they work, blah, 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 and then you rank them. You make the choice. Does, does, does it not frustrate you when the media run away with, with a story or which is completely wrong? So say, for instance, you mentioned Dillian, he became uh, the official uh, uh, number one challenger for the WBC after you bought, bought Rivas. The, the press didn't give that impression. So does it not frustrate you during that of a press office to say, well, actually, this is the case. Are you, or are you waiting to be asked? You know, we have a, as, as an organization, we have very limited outlets. We can do our own press release and the media may choose to simply ignore it. We don't have the outlet as, as a television network, as a radio. Uh, so it's a complicated task. We live in a world where, where everybody's looking for the negative the violence, the blood. When you put something nice and positive, they don't care. And we do a lot of great things in the boxing world. We change rules. We make sure that boxing becomes safer. Every single year we make adjustments. Uh, we have a fund to assist uh, retired fighters in problems. Uh, for example, we don't charge sanction fees to women. You know, they, they make so much less money. We don't charge them sanction fees. We have the clean boxing program. We have X, Y, and Z. Nobody cares about that. But you, 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 you mentioned that. What do you think of the criticism uh, uh, of him public, you, you publicly uh, announcing the suspension of, of doping controls? What do you, what do you think the, uh, the criticism you get from that? Well, this doping matter, the clean boxing program, its core, its most important value is transparency. Why would we lie and say that there's a doping control officer near you when it is not? We care for the safety. And whoever wants to criticize that we are not going to put a doping collector in the street in danger, and we're not, a put, we're not going to put a fighter who is at home taking care of his family, not going mm -hmm. out, and then someone knocking on the door and all the risks that come with it. I'm sorry. Why would I lie and say there, there's a clean boxing program going on when you cannot even leave your house? Mm. Uh, I think we had, something, we had something similar in the UK, Maurizio, about, I think about a week or 10 days before you name, made your announcement. Uh, UCAD, which is, you know, the British at UK Anti-Doping. They, they got loads of criticism because they, they came out and said, uh, much more than yourselves, uh, but they came out and said that there won't be any, just letting you know that there won't be any testing for the time being. And the criticism they got, it weren't really that the, that it was suspended because a lot medically, Maurizio, we're in uncharted territories, aren't we? We don't we don't know anything medically. We don't know anything that's happening with anything. But it was, I think, the confusion was why was there a need to announce that there were going to be a suspension? Why not just kind of leave it hanging? Well. I was asked by ESPN, so I, I just said the truth. And then somebody else asked, and they said, too, so we decided to announce it. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't see anything wrong. If someone dopes, he's going to get uh, caught. You know, this the test we perform go back years uh, in the traces. I, I trust the fighters and the, the willingness to remain clean for the sake of the sport. If there are some who cheat, uh, then they will get caught. And of course, the clean boxing program continues to work. We're doing a lot of uh, checking. We're contacting every athlete who is enrolled to verify the information, to give them some advice, blah, blah, blah. But I don't, I don't believe in, in lying and I don't believe in keeping the truth from, from being out whenever there's nothing to hide. So yeah. I, I, I feel I don't see this as a major, it a lot it. of people. What do you, when you look at Britain now, Maurizio, and how Britain's leapt forward in terms of the popularity of boxing, and obviously you've been to shows over here, what do you think to the explosion that kind of, I suppose it kind of came off the back of AJ originally, but what do you think to how the fans are here now and how the sport's exploded? Did it take you by surprise when you came across and witnessed it yourself? or? You know, I was born in This Boston. is a Maurizio, one important question first. Do you know all the words, though, to Sweet Caroline? <laughs> <laughs> You, you can see me in the showers uh, singing Sweet Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was born in the sport. My father was a member of the WBC since 1968. I was born in 1969. So everything, when I born, everything has been boxing in, in my life. I used to hear my father talk about British boxing. And I know the history, you know, boxing was born in, in Britain. The modern boxing was born in your country. But uh, John Tracy knocked out Mantequilla Napoles in Mexico. That, that's the, my first and very few experience uh, in the 70s. And then something happened, the 80s and the 90s, 2000s, British boxing was not... Uh, as what it was portrayed historically. But today, my God, boxing in Britain is number one. It's booming. Just the quality, the quantity, the, the level of, uh, of every aspect of the sport, you know, the fans, the media, the activity. It's number one in the whole world. And I think... It, we're, we're living a dream world of boxing, this happening, and it will not go away. I'm, I'm certain that British boxing is ruling the world, and, and I'm very happy for it. Yeah, we hope so. We hope it continues. I was talking a while ago, I was talking to Jimmy Lennon Maurizio, and, and he was saying about the times, you know, traveling around with his dad going to shows, and he says I'll, they were just the most special of times to be able to be with a parent, not just working, but just the time traveling, the time together, the time in hotels, it's, it must be similar to what you experienced with your father. Yes, you know, it, it's such a double side of the, each story. You go to a big fight, you know, the hype, the weigh-in, there's so many people, the autographs that they asked my father and the pictures and so many people and the meetings and all this and that. And then you get that moment when you bring him to bed. After dinner, when you go to his room, all alone, all quiet, uh, the natural human being things, and then it starts all over again next day, you know, mm -hmm. you pick him up, yeah. and then the big up and down constantly. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I, I lived so many great experiences being with my father, both in the boxing world and both in a humanic uh, humanitarian or personal relationship with my father. Yeah. You, you go to you go to um, some of the, the Chavez fights with your father, Mauricio? That must have been very special, like, atmosphere-wise, because obviously being a Manchester lad, there was Ricky Hatton that I'd go to either with my father or family members. You know, your aunt, Anthony Joshua, enough, but nothing compares to how Chavez is in Mexico. You'd go to the Chavez fights with your father? Many, many, many Chavez fights. Uh, that was a great era for for boxing, for Mexican, uh, for the country, for boxing overall. 
you know, Chavez, uh, he fought 37 world title fights. I mean, if, to put that in perspective, it's huge. Maybe that will never be broken, that record. Yeah. Uh, he filled the Aztec Stadium, 136,000. He was undefeated. He lost on the 19th fight. So for a long period of time, 14 years, he was undefeated. And nobody thought he would ever lose. He was just a monster in the ring. And it was a great time for the sport. You know, as a, as a next what was it? One sec, John. What was it like being in an arena Mauricio, with that many people for a fight? What was the That's what I'm thinking. To actually be sat there, in it. What was the crowd like? It must have been bananas. I mean, the atmosphere, the, the, the chants, people, everyone uh, uh, chanting Chavez, Chavez. And uh, every punch, everywhere it would ex explode. <clears throat> it, was, it was very, very special. I, I look at all the belts behind you, and I'm mesmerized. I think it's the only belt I ever, ever really wanted as a fighter. But the one that, that gets my attention more than any is the one at the bottom, the, the, the Jack Johnson replica uh, heavyweight belt. That's, that's one belt I'd, I'd love to just, just get in my hands, the original. Uh, <laughs> are the heavyweights uh, at the center of the boxing world all over again? Are, we, are the heavyweights there again? Are they the ones, that, the main players now? Absolutely. Heavyweight boxing is back after a 20-year layover. You know, when Lennox Lewis uh, retired as champion, uh, we have had a void. The Klitschkos were great fighters, uh, but they did not capture the world attention. Mm -hmm. And they could not fight each other because they're brothers. So that created a, 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 a distance today. Everybody's talking about the heavyweights. Fury, Joshua, Wilder, Ortiz, Povetkin. Uh, there's so many challenges coming up that will make uh, ent entertaining and, and challenges, real challenges. What, what, what do you think the explosion has been? Because at one point, uh, the, the heavyweight division, yeah, it went really quiet. The Klitschko brothers were, were, were head honchos, but... We were told that there was so much choice for sport in America. That's why America were no longer producing the fighters they were. You had basketball, American football, baseball. And so, so, so potential champions, potential fighters drifted away. Now, all of a sudden, the Americans are now producing again. Now, they're, they're, they're producing Eastern European, but uh, are producing unbelievable heavyweights. Uh, the whole world has, 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 has exploded. Well, you, you, you've made a perfect uh, explanation. The, so many other choices of sports made the United States shrink in boxing. And that era of uh, Tyson, Holyfield, Lennox Lewis, Riddick Bowe, that was the last uh, generation of great American heavyweights. But now it's coming back. And I truly believe uh, that the platforms, the promotions, I think if, if they did a, a special two-year program, like looking for the next Mike Tyson, something like that, a, a national tour, and uh, UK did something similar, you could bring back uh, the, I mean, continue that uh, heavyweight uh, growth of, of champions. Mauricio, do you think... Because we're always looking for the next big stars in boxing and historically a lot of times they come from the Olympics. Do you think it's a bit of a blow that the Olympics back a year? Well, it's, it's, of course it's a big, big blow for the world. So many athletes who had already qualified for the Olympics, but it would not be fair. I mean, everybody uh, is not training at the level that they should be training for an Olympic competition. So it is fair, and just going back one year, we'll see what happens. Regarding boxing, I'm very concerned with the sport in the amateur uh, side. You know, uh, to think that professional fighters can compete in the Olympics is such a uh, uh, horrible, complicated, and dangerous situation. I agree. I think we all agree with that. Yeah. And especially, you know, in professional boxing, if you are a four-round fighter, you fight against a four-round fighter. You don't see a four-rounder against a ten-rounder. 
Yeah. And here they have opened up that there's no uh, difference between a four rounder or Tyson Fury or or uh, Canelo Alvarez. I mean, any fighter would, can go and and participate against. There's no level of competition. It's very dangerous. How do, you, how do you think that situation, how do you think they've ended up with that situation, Maurizio, where, like you say, look, I'm not saying he would, but Alvarez, for an example, could say, do you know what, I always, I want an Olympic gold medal, I really want an Olympic gold, I'm going to go and re-enter the Olympics. I, I, have they ended up, the IOC, in this situation where that can be allowed? Well, they ended up, it's it's a problem of AIBA, the federation who was in charge of boxing for the amateurs became very corrupt became very business oriented. They created profession, semi-professional and professional within the organization. And they were signing the fighters to be managers and, and gain money from the fighters. And that came, it was a 12 year period, the lowest, and that's why they got expelled by the IOC. They're not recognized anymore. The problem is the IOC said, okay, we have the Olympics, we will keep boxing, but we will not touch the rules. We cannot get into that. We will not modify. Mm. That's why uh, that was still in place. Hopefully, they will revise it for 21 and, and take it away and leave it for the amateur fighters. Do you think any, do you think any more pros will try and get into it, Maurizio, or do you think it'll be, it'll be steered away from it? No, professional fighters, uh, they understand what it is and they don't want to go they yeah, they yeah. they have that conscious they say how will i take the dreams of a young kid away yeah. i already through that it seems like it seems like a, an adult going to play in a, a kid's playground and stealing all the toys and say i'm champion of the world it just seems, <laughs> it seems that's, ex that. that, that's exactly it i only see a fighter who's over the hill who has no more future in in professional could say, okay, I'm going to go and, and win an Olympic medal. Maybe that will remerge my career. Uh, but I don't see any serious, uh, real boxer with a strength that could hurt an amateur. I understand it. that. But if you've got a fighter that's experienced and he goes into the amateurs, you'd expect him to, to put it off. I think, um, uh, let me see, the likes of Lomachenko was even beaten by someone that was just more experienced than him. Uh, to, 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 and then learn the lesson after that. So I think uh, for, for. Who was the French? Mauricio, who was the French? And, and I know. Who was the French kid who went back into. And got the dam. Asan the dam. Asan the dam. Was it a middleweight? And who was it? If somebody did. Asan the dam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did it. Didn't he? Yes. Well, yeah, there was yeah. also an Italian fighter. He yeah, was yeah. very young. And a Thai who was a flyweight world champion. Wow. But, but he had to compete in lightweight. Yeah. Because you have, work, make, you have to make weight 15 Day days. Left. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't always work. That's it. Like you say, Nadam, I think he lost in his first fight. Most of the professionals last time he went to compete in the Olympics, it didn't work for them. It didn't work for them at all. But I, I do yeah. agree where it's like, do you know, for somebody who's had the opportunity to then go back and sort of steal this young young mm. lad's dream or woman, their dream, it's, it's not nice. Yeah. yeah. Right, Maurizio, we know how busy you are, so I can't thank you enough for being so generous with your time. You know, thank you so much. This has been really, really entertaining, and uh, we'll get through this. Uh, we'll remember these times when we are old, we will look back and see what humanity went through. And uh, let's just keep active. That's the key. Stay active. Keep your mind active. Work and uh, enjoy. We always say, oh, I don't have time to do this. I'm too busy. Now we have all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, read a book. Yeah. Uh, learn how to do something. It's so many things that we can do. But the key is mental health. Don't let the anxiety get to you. Thank you so very much for this, and uh, I wish you the best, and I cannot wait to see you in person one of these days. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.